evening and welcome to evening prayer. Bless you for being here tonight. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Psalm 1 tells us, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path of that sinner's tread, or sit in the seats of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. We have a reading from Numbers, where we continue to read in chapter 11, verses 24 to 33. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad. Medad, I don't know. And the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men said, My Lord, Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Then a wind went out from the Lord, and it brought quails from the sea, and let them fall beside the camp about a day's journey on this side and a day's journey on the other side, all around the camp, about two cubits deep on the ground. So the people worked all day and night, and all the next day gathering the quails. The least anyone gathered was ten homers, and they spread them out for themselves all around the camp. But while the meat was still between their teeth, before it was consumed, the anger of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord struck the people with a very great plague. So that place was called Kibroth Hatava, because there they were buried, the people who had the craving. From Kibroth Hatava, the people journeyed to Hazarod. The second reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 18, 1 to 9. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? He called a child, whom he put among them and said, Truly, I tell you, unless you change and become like children, 
you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes humble like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if, it, if a great millstone was fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block comes. If your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or lame than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if you, your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into the hell of fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a rather harsh bit of Bible and thanks be to God is sometimes not always easy. There's also an interesting reading today, which I did not read, but perhaps you would like to, because it's, it fits into our uh, schedule of readings. This is Romans 1, verses 28 to 2, verses 11. And it's all about behavior and being kind to one another and being impartial and not judging. However, I'm sorry, but I will really let these readings speak for themselves. Because I'd rather, much rather, share with you the blessings of this wonderful day that I had in Rotterdam with a dear friend. We visited some museums. We walked in the museum park. We took refreshments out in the sun. And we enjoyed our girly talk. I've worked in Rotterdam for the, in various parts, big city, for 34 years, but today I was really down memory lane in a part of central Rotterdam where I used to spend a lot of time, especially in the 90s. I took a lot of photos and we walked some eight kilometers. And it is also a blessing that you are fit enough to be able to do this. While we were walking in the park, to my surprise, the Greek Orthodox Church was open. It is the Church of St. Nicholas, and that's the same St. Nicholas who is the, well, the original Santa Claus. And he has his own rather secular feast in Dutch culture on December the 6th, one of the main, main festivals in our Dutch culture. Anyway, so we went inside. And the gentleman welcomed us and told us about the frescoes, the objects there, the invisible altar that was covered with a curtain, and the psalters. And we talked, we compared various aspects of our faith. For instance, the calendar, which is different, as Easter and Pentecost. They hadn't had Pentecost yet. Um, so I suppose the... Um, the Holy Spirit came in partitions, so to speak. Just the other day we read, we in evening prayer, we read about the tribe of Levi becoming the keepers of the faith and the tabernacle and all the things that they had to do. Uh, also in this church, the altar is invisible and only accessible to the priests, just like with the Jews. Because the gentleman told us, if I can remember correctly, Greek Orthodoxy came directly from the first Christians who were Jews. So many similarities remained. Since I first started evening prayer, no, I, I, I'm not going to say that, I'm going to say something else first. Um, so I asked the gentleman who attracted him in St. Nicholas, 
What attracted him in St. Nicholas? He said kindness and a tendency to justice. He said kindness, but he also said he wasn't always a nice man, this Nicholas. But he also said, we do not choose saints. There were various saints pictured along the walls of this church. We do not choose saints. Saints choose us. Now, perhaps as Protestants, we have a different idea of what saints are. But I'm quite sure that we all have saints in our lives. And I'm just giving you this moment to think of some saints that help you when you yourself can't go on. Support you, save you. So this, this tender thought I'd like to give you to ponder on. We do not cho choose our saints. Saints choose us. Let it be so. Now in honor of the beautiful church, a visit to this church of St. Nicholas in Rotterdam, and also of the kindness of someone I know on the internet, J. Michael Thompson, um, who I met during, well, actually four years ago when I started evening prayer, because it was music that I took particular care in choosing. So I came across this man who is a professor of ecclesiastical chant at the Byzantine Catholic Seminary in Pittsburgh in, well then Chicago, in, in the USA. And he is an author, composer and musician. And I learned heaps about liturgy from the music that he puts on the internet with the explanations. And I have had from the start his very kind permission to use it freely. And this is probably why you get a lot of that sort of music from me uh, over the years. And today, in honor of the beautiful visit to the Church of St. Nicholas in Rotterdam, and of the kindness of Mr. J. Michael Thompson, I chose for today a sound file which he has put to music from the Psalms of Praise, and this one is specifically for St. Nicholas.
Let us pray. Lord our God, at the ending of this day, and in the darkness and silence of this night, cover us with healing and forgiveness, that we may take our rest in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, from whom all thoughts of truth and peace proceed, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide, you, guide with your pure and peaceable wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth, that in tranquility your kingdom may go forward till the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God without one God, world without end. Amen. And now, in the cycle of prayer for this East Midland, Midland Synod. On Wednesday, we pray for the ministers, elders and members of our churches in Lincolnshire. And we also pray for the people who have asked for prayer. We pray for Chris Willis, our administrator and office manager in the East Midland Synod, following her surgery. For Elaine Dre, secretary of our former Ermine URC in her pain and anxiety, as she awaits surgery. For June Peffy. For Graham Garlap, recovering from surgery. And for the Reverend Caroline Andrews. For Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen in her care and concern for him. With Alison for her parents, Reverend Brian Russell and Dorothy Russell. For Barbara Turner of Holy Moorside URC as she awaits surgery. For the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr in her ongoing cancer treatment. We pray for the Reverend Liz Adams. We pray for the Reverend Hamish Temple for recovery from surgery. For Jean Schenk we pray and for the Reverend Brian Schenk in his care and concern for her. For the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery. For Moina Hobart's parish priest, Father Andy, we pray. We also pray with me for my friend Bea and for my friends in the USA, Kelly, who is recovering, and for Laverne in her care and concern for him. We have the Reverend Claire and Reverend Brian Davison for Susie, their daughter. For Cheryl and for Prince and the family in their ongoing care for her. With Andy for Mike, his dad, and for Liz and Ruth in their ongoing care of him. For John and for Irene as she continues to look after him. We pray for Margaret Davis, secretary of our former URC, Rose Hill, who is very poorly. We pray with Basil and Grace for Ikari, who is four, and in the HDU at Leicester Royal Infirmary. I'm not quite sure what that is, HDU. We also pray for members of the royal family for recovery from illness and for good health. We pray for those who grieve, especially for Alison's sister Carolyn on the death of Carolyn's husband Steve. We also pray with Alison's husband Paul and his dad Roy and all the family on the death of Paul's mum Pat. We pray for those who grieve for Don Buxton, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton. And we pray for all who grieve for Bishop Alan Wilson, especially his wife Lucy and the family, for all who grieve the passing of loved ones, we pray. Thank you, Irene, High Dependency Unit, HDU. Again, Lord, let us be thankful that we can enjoy our days, that we can find enjoyment, refreshment, peace, 
and inspiration from a day of sunshine, from a day of being outside and being able to, well, walk around, move around and, and, and feel healthy and happy in friendship. It is a blessing. We also ask you to give us your blessing, Lord, to your church holiness, to the world peace, to this nation justice, and to all people knowledge of your law. Keep safe our families, protect the weak, heal the sick, comfort the dying, and bring us all to a joyful resurrection. We ask these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now I have a question for you, because usually I, I have some closing music, like almost always, and then during the closing music, um, you are here and saying goodbye and good night, which is lovely. And then I wonder, because at the end of the music, we always say a blessing. And I'm just wondering, should I do the blessing before the closing music or after? Well, I'll be happy to read your comments. For now, I will let you listen to the music and I'll do the blessing after. And the music is, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. And it is a wonderful song which is sung by a children's choir from Jakarta. I'm not sure why, but somehow YouTube brings me to these uh, video clips and uh, I really like it to see that, to have music from other countries, but it's still familiar. All right, let's go. Let there be peace and let it begin with me.
Thank you for your comments. I'll read them later. For now, may the Lord bless us with his grace and fill us with his peace. Amen. And good night.